welcome to a uh, new video on our the beginning of a new video series on how to fly with a joystick for those uh, who are new to flying with joysticks. Um, I have, well, I've had joysticks longer than I have mouse. Uh, first joystick I got was circa 1985. I don't think we got the first mouse for our computer back uh, when I was a kid until 88, maybe even as late as 89. Um, ironically enough, I still have that mouse in a box here somewhere. Uh, it was a genius mouse. Three button mouse for uh, those of you who might remember those days. But anyway, I thought that today I would just go over for the first in this series some of the basics of flying with a joystick. I only have got the one webcam, however I've got two more of these webcams on order, should hopefully be here sometime in the next week. Um, unless Amazon fails me this time, uh, although they haven't failed me yet. So it should be sometime, uh, the other two cameras should be here sometime later this week. Um, and I will be able to show uh, multiple angles of flying with a stick, more advanced controls, but today we're going to go over the basics. Um, as well as eventually I'll be able to put a, a camera um, on my pedals as well as my throttle so you can see what I'm doing at all uh, at all times when I'm flying with a HOTAS setup and then what's going on in game. Now um, I will be flying uh, today with Elite Dangerous as opposed to Star Citizen uh, simply because Elite Dangerous supports more of the peripherals that I'm using. I can use my uh, uh, multi-function displays. Uh, I'll show you an example of uh, what one of these looks like. Uh, this is a multi-function display. They're uh, Thrustmaster Cougar MFDs designed to mimic um, uh, the F-16 A-10 type multi-function displays. You'll actually see them in Star Citizen uh, if you look at the latest uh, mock-ups for the Avenger cockpit. Uh, today I'm flying with my CH fighter stick pretty much for all of these videos uh, it will more than less likely be all CH gear now when I go into more sophisticated demo setups and stuff like that the image um, you know this is a VGA or 640 by whatever size webcam image I have right now so it's fairly large I'll be using smaller um, videos for uh, video sizes whenever we start comparing different types of setups for Star Citizen in particular but that's not going to happen until Star Citizen gets the ability to map individual controllers and controls in game um, once we have that ability I'll be going back to flying in more of Star Citizen okay so with that all out of the way let's get down to kind of basics um, the first thing to remember is that in any flight sim or flight game, flight skills are a perishable skill, meaning that if you don't fly at least um, so many hours per week or at least a month, uh, a lot of the skills, muscle memory and things of that nature that you develop over time uh, gets lost. That being said, it's a little bit like riding a bike, but if you've not flown a flight simulator in two or three weeks, or a couple three months you know I would not hop in and then expect to uh, go PvPing against elite pilots uh, unless you want to lose your ship and all of your gear uh, especially in elite dangerous so you know the first lesson is to block out uh, a certain amount of time each day or each week um, to get stick time and you know this is what really makes the difference uh, in aerial combat even today uh, with air forces like Israel and uh, US Air Forces being superior to that of many other countries um, not because necessarily the gear is as superior anymore but then the amount of flight hours per year um, that those pilots log compared to uh, their counterparts in, uh, in other smaller air forces same thing happens with flight combat sims and games so the first thing to remember that is in any flight combat game skills are perishable second kind of war of advice you know a, a lot of people have the tendency to death grip the thing ah you know and, and you don't want to do that although I will say with the warthog with the thrustmaster warthog you might have to a little bit because it has such tight center springing this CH stick does not if you'll notice whenever I get into flying 
I, I don't really even have a tight grip on it. I know it, it's probably hard to see. Uh, and hopefully whenever I can get like three cameras set up, you can kind of see this better. But I don't death grip the thing. I, in fact, when I'm flying, I'm using this to pull or push, you know, this to pull. I am, I'm almost very light. And that's because with a CH stick, because of its very light springing, this movement, any barely movement will be, will register. If I was, say, trying to use this, an X-52 stick, where you tend to have a much wider dead zone, uh, you would find that I would be gripping it a little bit tighter, trying to get gain, uh, better control over it. So maybe I should say it might depend a little bit on the stick that you're using. Uh, you know, if I was trying to use the CH, or uh, the Satex stick here, uh, I might have a little bit tighter grip. But on the CH stick, I have a very, very light feel. Because I think a lot of people that are new to joysticks, they do tend to do two things. They tend to death grip the thing, you know, starting out. And then the other thing is they, they make wide movements, you know. They're, they need to turn just a little bit. And, you know, they're all the way over here. And then they're having to correct. And they lose a lot of the precision and, and accuracy. You don't need, especially if you're using a CH gear or a T16000M, um, there, there's very little to no dead zone. So you want to, um, you know, barely move it. A little movement is all it takes to, to line up that fine precision um, shot. And the rest of it just comes with practice. Now, with CH gear in my lifetime, I probably have more than a thousand hours of flight time between my old set and this new set. I mean, I, I maybe am ranging upwards of about fifty to sixty hours now of flight time with this with this particular stick. Uh, but I had hundreds, if not a thousand or more hours of flight time with my CH uh, Flight Stick Pro back in the '90s, and the action, the the movement action on those on these two sticks, are very similar. So it was literally like. You know, the first two or three hours, within the first hour, I had that muscle memory back. So something else you'll notice. Now, I'm resting my elbow at the moment, but I am using my entire shoulder and forearm. I'm not using my wrist that much. I'm moving, at, in particular, I'm moving at the elbow. When I'm moving these things, I'm, I'm doing my forearm. And when we get into game and it really starts to get intense, I tend to lift up. And I'm maneuvering with part of my uh, upper arm and shoulder and forearms. I am not sitting here, you know, I, I'm not making these movements with my wrist. I am not using my wrist at all. Now, if you have twist on the stick, that's where wrist usage comes into play. Uh, one of the reasons why I prefer rudder pedals over twist stick is, um, you know, my wrists are bad enough and it's going to require surgery sooner or later. Um, I would prefer to, to hold off on that as long as I possibly can. And having twist on a stick is not going to help. I mean, if you look at my other gear around, and I'm sure I'll show you, I don't have a fancy gaming keyboard. I have a Microsoft ergonomic keyboard. I have an ergonomic mouse pad uh, for use with my mouse here. And there are reasons for that. Um, I gave up on WSAD games because of, you know, I could play for 45 minutes and then the top of my hand and my wrist would just start burning. Um, you know, it's just not worth it for the, the physical ill effects. Um, so that's one of the main reasons why I went back to wanting to go back to flight sims and stuff like that with a HOTAS. You know, all of my movements are coming from arm, elbow, shoulder, um, not my wrists. So, honestly, what hurts the, the greatest time is after playing for an hour or two, my, my butt falls asleep in the chair. Um, and, and that's, you know, far superior to wrist hurting and having to wear brace, uh, you know, wrist brace and carpal tunnel brace and all that good stuff. So, those are some of the basic tips for folks who are new uh, with joysticks. So, let's actually start up the game here. And uh, I'm hoping I have everything calibrated correctly. I see CCH manager running in the background. I see the target running in the background. 
And why am I back here? Yeah, you were seeing the game. I was seeing the broadcast screen. Uh, something else to note, I've gone from using NVIDIA Shadow Play to using uh, Open Broadcaster. Um, good and bad, Open Broadcaster saves as a Shockwave Flash, or I guess it's a Flash video. Um, but the file sizes are fractional, so they upload to YouTube a lot faster, and quality seems to be there. So for this, I'm going to run combat scenarios, excuse me, as opposed to... Um, uh, multiplayer because I, I don't want to be trying to do one of these videos and actually fly in multiplayer. Close this out. Let me get my foot on the pedals. And here we go. Crap, and my throttle is not zeroed out. So I need to go recalibrate my throttle, I think. Oh no, maybe it is. So no throttle. I'm not really moving, but notice how I'm just barely... Now I'm trying to maneuver all with just the stick. I'm trying to keep my hands off the throttle, the little mini stick for strafing maneuvers, as well as the pedals for yaw. Now this game is a pitch and roll. It is set up for pitch and roll. Um, over pitch and yaw. Uh, you'll recall my previous videos in Star Citizen, I prefer pitch and yaw. This game, it's definitely pitch and roll. And even pitch and yaw was on the 300i and the Hornet. I preferred uh, pitch and roll on the, the Aurora, actually. So, when it comes to things like that, so a lot of it is personal preference, and I'm moving around the cockpit because I have track IR um, enabled and calibrated. So as I move my head to look at different things, you can see, is that it? Is there one more? Nope, oh, that's it. So we'll do that and um, we'll, we'll go do a NPC kill one-on-one -on -one here real quick. So you can see now here I'm going to be using everything at my disposal. Um, I am, where is he, should be up here. Now these are fixed guns, they do have a little bit of gimbaled action, but they are fixed, uh, which would have been equivalent to how class ones are supposed to operate in Star Citizen. But according to the Star Citizen developers, hitting anything with class one guns was too hard. Really? Really? Not that hard. Maybe if you're a mouse and keyboard user, where you have to actually have some skill and line up your shots, it might be too hard. But not with a HOTAS. Especially not with a CH HOTAS. Which I think for just general gameplay is... Oh, crap! Oh, I got him. Oh, no. He's still alive at 36%. Now I'm trying not to use my full six degrees of freedom so you can see how I maneuver with just a stick, but I think in situations like that I had better go ahead and use the mini stick on my throttle to, to strafe out of that. Boom. He went kaboom. Yay, 1400 credit bounty doesn't really count for anything uh, yeah let's go ahead and do the 
We'll do it again. We'll play it again, Sam. Play it again. Now I've toggled assist off, so I actually was going into full Newtonian there. I, I tend to like to toggle that. Now People's common complaint about this game from Star Citizen, all the ships look like Dorito chips. Eh. I really could care less how ships look so much as how do they function, how does the game mechanics play. In all those regards, Frontier's done a, a pretty good job. Now they do have slight auto-aim. Uh, you can tell where those little triangles go. But you've got to get your nose on target for that to happen. And... Uh, I mean, people claim that, you know, mouse keyboard is not, or, uh, is far superior in accuracy for something like this. And, uh, you know, fly game like this, nope. If you have the right stick and you have the right skills, mouse and keyboard is not any more accurate. So we went through a couple of quick games with that and noticed how I used the stick, um, and, and how accurate it was. Oh, did I say restart? Okay, we'll go, we'll go one more round here. And then notice I'm kind of already using maneuvering thrusters to uh That's where track IR comes in very very handy as you can uh keep your visual ID on targets. Even here at long ranges, peppering pretty good. There we go, he's dead. All right, so that's going to conclude the uh, part one of the tutorial. And that's just going to cover basic joystick mechanics of how I work. In upcoming videos, I'll be producing these once a week until I really kind of get done with um, doing scenarios. Whenever we get more advanced patches and the ability to do key binding in Star Citizen, I will definitely show how this all works in Star Citizen. Uh, until then, I'll be using Elite Dangerous, um, but, you know, open it up to both, really, players of both games. Um, thank you very much for watching, and next week, whenever we cover it, hopefully I'll have all three video cameras and I can set up and then we'll look at more how do I use uh, a HOTAS, the stick part of the HOTAS, where you can see the, the current angle you're seeing now. You'll be able to see it from the side and hopefully also be seeing it from up and behind. So you can see how I'm manipulating all the different buttons, which keys and stuff I'm using, what I'm not using, when I'm doing it, um, to give some people ideas of, okay, well, how do you manipulate all of these controls? So thank you very much uh, for watching. and. Be sure to subscribe to the channel um, and uh, to view all the uh, later videos. I think I'm up to around 40 subscribers and um, uh, around 5,000 views for the channels, which is great. Um, you know, hopefully next week we can get that up to 50 subscribers and, uh, you know, six or 7,000 views for the channel. So again, thank you very much for watching and uh, see you next week.